You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Slightly Warped. Uh, the podcast where two crazy people talk about crazy things and make you laugh, make you think, and sometimes piss you off. That's what we do. I'm Rick, <laughs> joined again by Big Show. Show, how you doing, man? Pretty good, sir. How about yourself? Uh, you know, I can't complain. Uh, this weekend, we had our fantasy football draft. Oh. And I was this close to picking up Lamar Jackson. What stopped you? I had the number two pick. Oh, so, so you picked Derek Carr instead? No, actually, <laughs> I, 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 the the number one pick guy, he actually picked Patrick Mahomes. So I'm like, oh, this is how we playing. Okay. So I got Josh Allen. Heck yeah. Because I need somebody that's going to put up numbers almost week in and week out. Now, on the slide, in like the sixth round, Derek Carr was available. So I did pick him up as a backup. <laughs> by then lamar was gone so you know i don't i don't understand when drafting people drafting quarterbacks early you um, gotta get running backs well i guess it depends on the league you're in my league running backs are pretty 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 uh powerful point wise yeah i mean there's a lot of good running backs in the league that we have so we're good there i quarterbacks though are kind of iffy and i know last year i got stuck with like ryan Tannehill or something like that and, and it hurt me down the stretch uh, i missed the playoffs by one game and you know at that well, point who was your other quarterback um i had two Derek carr no it was not it was the <laughs> cleveland browns quarterback uh well he's not uh, cleveland's anymore and then some other scrub well, basically and both, of them, carr both of them got hurt we had that discussion hey, a couple weeks ago. Basically, put, Derek Carr. Put, some, Same put guy. some respect on my QBs. <laughs> See, and that's the thing. You know what? Like, since people... we're talking about the Raiders. Yes, sir. For a second. Dude, they cut the first round draft pick. What's up with that? But remember, it's not this regime's first round draft pick. The dude wasn't working out. I, I watched the tra training camp. I watched all the games. I've seen him the last couple of years. He just hasn't worked out. He's a liability that would get your quarterback killed. So he had to go. Huh. He wasn't even scheduled to start. That would have been a waste of money. Cut your losses, you know? It was definitely a waste of a draft pick. Yeah. Uh, and you can bet there won't be that under this regime because they're the old Patriot regime. They're like, I don't care what number you're drafted. You're eventually going to play. And is next man up. I like the next man up philosophy. You know, Kansas City uses that. They can afford to get rid of Tyreek Hill. You know why? Because next man up. Yeah. I mean. I just it, seen that and was pretty. I was. That, that interested me that they had cut him from their first round draft choice. So. Leatherneck, leather. What was it? Leatherwood. Name? Yeah. I knew it was Alex something. Leatherwood. Yeah. They, um, I believe they tried to shop him around, but they weren't getting any takers. Now, I'm pretty sure somebody will probably pick him up as a project and he'll have a few more years in the league before he just fades off into the sunset. Now, I'd be shocked if um, – What somebody... position – what what part of the line was he at? Um, I believe he was the left guard or left tackle. Okay. Pretty but important spot. The, and the reason why I'm confused is because they tried him at a couple different spots because it wasn't working out where they originally drafted him and they kept moving him around. Gotcha. And when you're being moved around for over two years and you're still not solidifying your spot and people are coming in taking your spot, you're a liability. And I, I think I think that the new regime is trying to make it so that, A, they're a playoff contender right now, and B, whether it be free agents or acquisitions, you know going in, you're going to get whatever we pay you 
unless you play your way into a big contract. You're not going to start off with a big contract and not prove anything. Although well, I, I am glad that they they did decide to pay um, Waller because he's worth it. Yeah, he's he's one of the top tier tight ends. I'll give you that. Yeah. Tried to get him in the draft, but uh, somebody snatched him up. I end up getting um, – Matter of fact, what is my uh, starting guys? I got them right here. What? Where? Where do you do your fantasy? Uh, NFL.com. Okay, y'all yeah. drafted early. Yeah, our draft was Sunday night. Uh, mine is Saturday. This coming Saturday night. Ah, what? Where are you on NFL or NFL? Okay. Uh, my starting quarterback, as you know, is Josh Allen. My running backs. We have two this start. And one is Alvin Kamara, and the other is Josh Jacobs. Say what good, you good will, picks. it's Jacobs. Good picks. Now, my receivers, uh, A.J. Brown and uh, Gabriel Davis from Buffalo. Where did A.J. Brown go to? Philly. Uh, They're going to run that division, uh, so he's going to get some numbers. That's my logic. They're I don't probably know. not going to win too no, many out-of-division games. He got no quarterback. That young guy. Again, he ain't got no quarterback. He ain't got no <laughs> Derek Carr. That's true. Um, my other wide receiver is Juju Smith Schuster, the one y'all just picked up. Yeah. He'll, he'll he'll see some action from Kansas City because yeah. they're gonna spread that ball around. My uh tight end, Kyle Pitts. Because like I said, Waller got snatched up. So I'm like, Good okay, pick. Waller got snatched up. I see Pitts sit right there. I took him. My kicker he's was at, he's Atlanta, right? Yes. My kicker is Daniel Carlson, and I got the Bills defense. Who do you got oh. for backups? Who's on your bench? I'd have to pull that up. Um, I'm not online right now on the phone. I'll, I'll oh, pull okay. that up later. But gotcha. uh, they, let's put it this way. They're not starting above these guys. I got a, we'll say, solid bench. Well, so you said I, Derek Carr is your quarterback, right? He's my your backup, backup quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, he, he'll see some action on that bye week for Buffalo. Unless, not going to lie, if he just comes out the gate with the first three games, just blowing people out of the water and throwing bombs to Devontae, and I see that he's putting up more points than Josh, which I doubt, that's the only way I would make that switch. So, Josh. Yeah, the, the only thing that that I would be hesitant is having both Josh Allen and Gabriel Davis. You know, that's going to be great when they could <clears> – <throat> when they could, like if they had a game like against the Chiefs, you know, where he had four touchdowns. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, um, I'm just real hesitant to have the same quarterback and receiver unless they're just – you know, like unless you had like a car in Devontae Adams. That's be different because, you know, my, he's going to be the number one guy all the time. My logic there is so many people are going to be keying on Stephon Diggs that that's going to get Gabriel Davis a lot more catches. I'd say they're not going to key on him no more than they did last year. It's not like it's not like Gabriel's a surprise. He just had one hell of a game. He was still a good receiver last year. Yeah. I mean, we just figured we decided we was going to put five guys on on Diggs and didn't even you know try to <laughs> try to defend Davis. So you know, hey, that that was a hell of a game. But that was I, one hell of a football game. I I will give yeah, that was. to you. That's one hell of a game. That um, was a fun. Don't ever tell your wife thirteen seconds isn't long enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, you made me lose my train of thought for a second. I, I, <laughs> if 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 I want to talk about in the last five, ten years, the three greatest games that I've seen, that one there is probably still number one. But I'm not going to lie. Close behind it was the play-in game for the playoffs that same year for the Raiders and the Chargers. I was just excited to get back into the playoffs. Yeah, and, I mean, I guess for a fan of the Raiders, yeah, as that a fan, would have been pretty ex as it, a, I mean, pretty exciting. But overall, NFL, it wasn't that great. But it, it, it was, it was, a it, good was game. it was a good final game of the season. Yeah, because it was the last 10. game of the year. You know, top ten. And then you got to go back a few years, but I really liked that Thursday night game between the Chiefs and the Raiders, where we had like four or five untimed downs at the end of the game to finally throw the winning pass to um, who was the dude. Um, is that the only time Derek's won in Arrowhead? No, no he's won no, twice, no. hasn't he? He's won twice. Because he, he he beat us in 19, right? Or 20? 
20. Um, one of those years. 2020. Yeah, that's when I'm, they decide to do a lap around. The, yeah, that's the, right. The, the wheels stadium. on the bus go round and round. Damn yeah. it, John. <laughs> <laughs> but that's one that's of the many right. reasons why John is not there anymore. Uh, not to mention he had to be stupid. If, there was no, social if, media. They could, if he didn't send all those emails, he'd still be your coach. Yeah, but I'm not going to lie because of what I've seen, and I've kept track of the entire offseason, the preseason games and everything, because of what I've seen from the attitude of this team and the way they're going about their business, I am genuinely surprised and happy that Gruden is not there. I think Gruden was too conservative. Josh McDaniels is going to open it up. And you got to take the top end off of it if you got somebody like Devontae Adams, at least I every mean, once right, in a while. But- you know, Gruden didn't have anybody like that either. So if you he put had, Devontae on that team, he, he, he had would've... rugs until he decided to, you know, rugs was he faster did. in the car than he was on the field. So how'd that work that's, out for that's, him? That's that's a whole nother conversation. Mm-hmm. So speaking of Gruden and his social media accounts, <clears throat> our first topic today is social media: the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now I know. I think it was about a year ago, Kevin and I had brushed on the topic of social media and we we just touched on some of the bad things. The reason why I said the good, bad, and the ugly is because there are some good things about social media. What would you say are some of the good things? And when I say social media, it's not just your Instagram account um, or your uh, whatever these other things are, TikTok, uh, whatever that thing is with the ghost, Snapchat, you know. <laughs> Facebook, uh, you know, all that. What do you see as some of the good things? I, I mean, I I like the jokes and the memes and the things like that. I mean, you know, it's a good way to connect with family, friends. You know, that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I honestly, social media, I could take it or leave it. I mean, yes, I'm on it. But if for some reason my account got accidentally deleted, I wouldn't lose any sleep. And I think that's the thing when it comes to guys like us, men and women of a certain age, we didn't have it 20 years ago. So it's not a big deal for us. I think somebody who's 18, 19, 20 years old, if they didn't have their social media account, they think the world was falling. FOMO. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, but when you get to be my age, there is no FOMO because I don't care. Exactly. If I'm not there, I don't care. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. Uh, You do get to keep up with friends and family, and um, it is a good way to cover a lot of distance with people in little time. Um, But I'd say one of the bad things is a lot of people take too much time on social media. It takes up a little bit too much of your time, and you find yourself doing things that you could do other things or you could do better if you weren't on social media. Um, One of the examples that I'm going to get into before I ask you what you think are the bad is I recently for just, you know, because it's something I wanted to do to my aunts and my uncles, I wrote letters to them, you know, nothing major, you know, just basically the, Hey, hi, how are you? Miss you hope everything's all right that kind of thing just a personal touch and i think that we've become too impersonal what do you think are some of the bad things about social media um i mean there's a lot like you said it's real easy to to fall down that rabbit hole you know start looking at your timeline or like i really get in the rabbit hole when it comes to like youtube like i'll click on youtube and then i just you know 35 45 minutes i'm like holy crap i the hell am I doing? You know, I have to put it down because you know, just the videos you just fall right into it. Um, negative side is people, you know, it's a pretend world, you know. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. It most people's lives online are not their real lives, you know, they portray or want you to think that it's a certain thing versus what it is, which is great because you don't want to people always want to, I guess. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, mask their true feelings. I mean, I'm guilty of this myself. Um, but, 
In case y'all didn't know, I'm broadcasting from my 30 foot yacht. <laughs> there you go. There. Oh. <laughs> is, is it a little little choppy? I see you're moving a little bit. <laughs> Every now and then, if you just kind of move your screen like this, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> um, Maybe turn but, on that water and just let it keep running. We'll think the boat's sinking. <laughs> Iceberg, right ahead. Um, the other thing is people are too comfortable mm. on social media. Um, you know, keyboard warriors is what I call them. That's because that's a lot of people. Know. A lot of people talk a lot of trash. Don't back it up. Um, Chief Sands. Say, say. <laughs> Write that down. Chiefs fans. All right. Uh, you know, they before you they... go any further, I just want to let the audience know mine is coming during that Chiefs Raiders game. You can best believe that every meme this man can find, he's gonna send me. So I'm just, you know, I'm getting prepared. <laughs> I wish there's a way I could just link him so everybody could see him. <laughs> so just you. That'd be awesome. Uh but I mean, that's that's pretty much it. You know, it's just it's not exactly what it is. If you go into it knowing exactly what you're getting out of it, you know, that not everything is truthful. A lot of people are going to make you believe things that aren't true and just take it for what that it is at face value. Then it's not too bad. And that's where we get into the ugly. The people that follow the people that, you know, have these, quote unquote, lifestyles trying to keep up with the Joneses or trying too damn hard to live that false life. And because of that, we get a lot of people with these, for lack of a better word, social anxieties or their every breath is hinged on what's going on with their social media account. How many people are following me? What can I do to get more viewers? Um, I think that's, that's something that's really ugly in the social media world. Your thoughts? I agree. No, I'm a hundred percent agree. Uh, you said it. <laughs> I mean, there's no more to add to it. I mean, that, that is, that's it. Well, I need the people that are listening and watching. Hey, um, like, share, and subscribe so I don't have to worry about looking at that number. <laughs> <laughs> There's no shame on this show. That's um, right. So um, let's go lighthearted real quick. Marvel versus DC, and I say round one because I'm going to explore this for the next couple weeks just because we can. Uh, and when I go into this, and this is no matter whether it's Superman or any other Marvel or DC character, I'm not picking on any of them. I, I like them all, some more than others. The reason why I wanted to start with Superman, I would say him along with Batman would be DC's flagship um, superheroes. And I... I'm going to talk about Batman in a week or two, but Superman, I believe, is unrelatable. And here's my logic, and then I want you to expound on this or tell me if I'm wrong. But he's basically a god. He's from another planet. We can't identify with that. He's got powers that we can't identify with. He doesn't have any first world or third world problems, for that matter. He's larger than life in every sense of the word. Um, and I know a lot of people say, well, he was raised by human parents and yada, yada, yada. Still, that he was raised by us, but he's not one of us. God, that sounded so racist. Um, <laughs> he's just not relatable. He, he's, okay, if Superman walked, flew i said walked if he flew into the club he could get any girl he wanted because he's superman the man ain't got to pay taxes because his house is somewhere in the north pole 
<laughs> what 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 problems he got? He ain't got no bills. You I mean, know? if he got a kryptonite necklace, he's got some problems. That's not our problem though. So he it's not relatable. Man. Now you said what kind of problems does he have? Oh well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if I'll, I if I was just scared of a little rock and that was it, man. But you're saying he's unrelatable because he's a god. He's not from this planet. He can fly. You just described Thor. Yeah. What's the difference? Thor has a great sense of humor. So does Superman. I'd have to see more of that. You'd have to I give mean, me some yeah, examples. But you're only seeing the Thor in the movies. That's what that, you're that's talking true. about. That's you're true. talking about the way Chris Hemsworth or whatever his name portrays him. You know, they, they make him comedic that way. But I mean, but if you just go as in the comic book character, they're the same character. Yeah, I see your point there because, you know, Thor, I'll take it a step further. Too many these and thous, I'd lose him in the conversation. So, And to be honest, are any of the superheroes in DC or Marvel really relatable? Well, you know, put it that way. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you an example of both. Batman is more relatable. Are you a billionaire? No. Okay, you can't relate. But check it out, though. He's a normal dude. He's got no powers whatsoever. He he has to defend on his mind. Right, but the, so you can too, but you wouldn't get as far because you don't have the toys and the money and the trinkets <laughs> to make it happen. <laughs> You can't relate. If Batman walk into the club, he's getting all the girls because he's Batman. He got all that money. Well, technically, Bruce Wayne gets all the girls. Same difference. Yeah, I can give you that. I mean, same difference. And no difference than, you know, DC's version of Batman, Green Arrow. You know, another rich guy. Uh, and then you got Iron Man in Marvel. Yeah, the Tony same got... Character. Yeah, Tony and Bruce are the same character. They really are. Uh, I, I like the fact that, you know, they kind of gave Tony a drinking problem. You know, they, they, they D, uh, not DC, excuse me, Marvel humanizes their characters just a little bit more. You know, even though they're billionaire playboys, they do give them a few problems that anybody could have. I mean, but Superman in those movies had the same problems. He was lovesick. He's worried about somebody killing his mama. You know, so he fought with one of his best friends, ended up being his best friend in Bruce Wayne. Yeah. I mean, all those are relatable to a certain extent. I, I don't think any of the comic book characters are relatable. Now, I'm glad you said relatable because your text message said repeatable. Yeah, that, that was spell check at its finest. And so I was thinking, okay, so are we talking about like, is he wanting to kick off the movie again and redo, reset? How are we doing this? And then when you said relate, I'm like, oh, this is a whole nother topic. Got it. Yeah, so, yeah. Re I got a whole nother spiel to go with that. So, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Repeatable. Uh, that's, yeah, you're right. That's a whole nother uh, thing. And that we're going to have a, uh, podcast one of these days talking about me being all thumbs on this iPhone because <laughs> I didn't even notice that <laughs> but yeah uh, okay so I, I see your points to uh, all of that and and in those ways hell you're right none of them are unrelatable or excuse I'm me gonna are be relatable. honest they weren't created to be relatable that's not you know what I mean that's that's not why they were created. They they were created for us to say, man, I wish I had that power. Now, I, I, wish I will. I could fly. I will contradict that statement. Captain America was created to give the uh, armed forces a boost because he was actually created during wartime to give our soldiers some hope and to uh, give them the intestinal fortitude to get out there and what had to be done and do what had to be done. Okay, so you named one out of a hundred million comic book <laughs> characters that were created that were relatable to us. There's one more. Who? Spawn. That nigga going to hell whether he like it or not. <laughs> I quit. 
I'm done. You can't be done That's yet. That's a wrap. See you, folks. You can't be done <laughs> yet because I want to go over one more topic before we get out of here. Because this chick is crazy with a capital C R A Z E E E. The name of this article that I found on the web I was my husband's stalker. Woman shares extreme measures she took to win over her husband. Now, right there, this is off. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a pose to you this question before I even go over the article. Who's crazier? Her or him? Well, I read the article because you sent it to me. Mm-hmm. And that caption that you just read is kind of misleading if you read the if you read the whole the whole it, thing. It is, it is, and and I'll read excerpts so people can understand that. I mean, and your to answer your question, obviously her because he still doesn't know about it. Well, after he according, reads this article, he according to the news, well, they never give her name. Ah, uh, true. So, true. and she said that you know it's something she couldn't tell her best friend. You know, honestly, I didn't. Go ahead, though, and we'll talk about it after you fill in the, the gap. Okay, well, I understand that what's, why she did some of the things she did. She, I mean, she said she believes in love at first sight. She met her husband uh, through mutual friends. And uh, I guess after they exchanged social media usernames, she said that he was pretty distant. This is kind of the stocky when you take it to the next level. She decided that she was going to um, find out all the places that he hangs out and she was going to interject herself into his friends' lives in order to get closer to him. And she even joined his little sister's swim school in the hopes that he would drop her off one day. Of course, it never happened, according to the article. Uh, she finally, one day, they met again at a music festival through a mutual friend, and that's when she um, made her move. And she said they talked and they hit it off pretty well, and the rest, as we say, is history. Now, I'm not going to lie. A lot of that is crafty, but a lot of that can be seen as creepy. You get me? No, I, I definitely understand. Yeah, it's... When now, you just read it in that context. I will say this, though, before you finish. If a woman does this, it's a lot less creepy, more crafty. If a man does this, it's a lot more creepy, a lot less crafty. I mean, maybe. Circumstances. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Just, just a little, though. I mean... <sighs> I didn't ever take it as, oh my God, this 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 is a crazy heifer here. You know, I never I never took it as that. I didn't think she was crafty either. Um I thought she would uh okay. I the join of the sister swim thing, so she that was a little that was a little above and beyond. Okay. If you wanted to, you know, show up every now and then, pretending you're picking up somebody just to see if you can run into them. Maybe, you know, but not every day wait for her to get dropped off open. It's going to be the dude. That was a little freaky. But little Almost like the rabbit time. in the pot. The rabbit in Almost. the pot. <laughs> Almost. Um, except the man already committed to that chick. We, yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, well, I digress. I mean, didn't, I mean, don't you remember going back to school, liking a girl and trying to figure out where she's going to be at so you could be there too, just so you could bump into her again. I mean, you ever do that? Yeah, you know, I try to be all slick like that. It's the same thing she did. She just did it with the modern technology. That That's kind of how I look at it. Now, she does have some red flags with the stuff that she did do. I, I would be hesitant if I knew it was her because, you know, if he ever messed up, lied to her, yeah, you, you're going to be tied to a bed and, you know, Things are going to get cut off and your bed's going to catch on fire. But, <clears throat> you know, I don't necessarily think she's. Maybe for a tad, she was a little outside of her mind, maybe, but not not bad. Bro, at Thanksgiving dinner, the little sister's going to be like, hey, weren't you at my swim school? <laughs> so yeah, something coming there, out. Yeah. 
I used to work there, yeah. So? Now, like, she was hiding in the bushes, you know, his back seat while he drive to work, and that's a little different. You know? Right, right. Peeking through his window, you know, watching him take a shower, you know, that's creepy. Yeah, that is creepy. But, you know, trying to put yeah. yourself in the places that he's going to be, trying to meet the people that he knows so you can meet him, maybe is not the the the, the correct way of getting somebody's attention, but it is pretty genius to try to interject yourself so you can get to know that particular person. Yeah. I mean, because even after all of that, and they met at the dance thing, he could have told her to kick rocks. Yeah. You know, and then she had realized they weren't compatible. So, so there's something there, obviously. I, I I give her I give her that for having the foresight of knowing that there was something there the first time, even though he didn't know there was something there. And and she she made it her life's mission to, you know, get up and go for it. And it was only for seven months. She only did this for seven months. Not like yeah. she did it for years at a time. But also, I mean it would even be creepier if she did interject. He said, "Kick rocks," and she was still stalking him until he changed his mind. Yes, that would be that would be different. Yeah, that, yeah. Te theoretically, that whole time she was doing these things, he didn't really know she existed. True, true. It's kind of, you know, I don't know. I, I ain't mad at her. Go ahead, girl. Do your thing. <laughs> All right. So, my question to you guys here on YouTube uh, that are watching the podcast. What is the craziest thing that you've done for somebody, you know, to get with them or that somebody's done to get with you? Leave us a comment. <clears throat> so, show, you do realize that next week will be upon us. Next week is our football spectacular. Looking forward to it. So everybody that hasn't watched any of the last couple shows, we just want to let you know that next week we're going through the AFC West and we are going top to bottom in our predicted order. You know, we want to say Broncos first place, Chargers second place, Chiefs third place, Raiders fourth place. We'll say that. Believe me, we won't because that's not the order that it's going to happen. But um, I'm just giving that as an example. And not only are we placing, but we are giving the predicted records. And the reason why we're doing this is because I want to come back to this as we wind down the season and see which one of us, if either, are closest to those predictions. And it'll be the uh, warped. NFL predictor wa prediction watch. <laughs> and we're also going to pick some games weekly as well. Yes, we will do that weekly, yeah. Um, so, but next week, that'll be the first week to pick games. So Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to say, obviously, we can't do all 16 games every week. We could. I, I'm thinking – you pick three matchups, I pick three matchups, and we bring those six matchups to the table, and we see we make predictions off of those. It could be any random matchups. But doesn't we don't want to pick the same game. Well, you know, we can discuss before the show, and we'll, we'll make sure that, you know, because I could go with, you know, any couple of games. I mean, I'm pretty sure that, you know, you'll – if you went with almost all Chiefs games as one of your three, I would go with almost all Raider games as one of my three. So right. that's one that we guaranteed that we would. We can you know, definitely do that. We can yeah. definitely do that. And then, you know. Just pick two other random games each. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we might just flip-flop AFC, NFC, you know, something like that. So we'll get that. And I, I'd, you know, be curious to see if anybody chimes in on any of the comments uh, as far as how we go through it. And one more thing before we go, we are having the Lamar car watch too. <laughs> Just to look at their numbers. And I do concede that, you know, the Lamar has the best upside 
But I need that brother to throw more. I really do. I, I, I no, you don't. <laughs> you need him to win. That's all. A hey. W is a W you in got the that National right. Football League. You are correct. I, who has the most playoff victories? Lamar Jackson or Derek Carr? You just you keep sticking it in and twisting it, don't you? I'm just asking questions. <laughs> who has the most playoff victories? Lamar right now. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I concede that. I concede that. Currently, Lamar is in the lead here. Um, you know, my guy never had a defense worth of shit, but, you know, that's a whole nother thing. I know. I know. And on that note, kids, we're going to step on out of here, but we appreciate each and every one of you for watching and listening. Big Show, thank you for coming on again. Yes, sir. We're going to do this. Next week, have fun. The football spectacular is coming up, y'all. Everybody, please stay positive, stay blessed, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.